Now we're on to the J10 block, and the J10 block is a bunch of little footballs in a big pattern. So this would be the gathering stitch mecca and the applique test, I would say, for this particular row. So I've got my pieces laid out. It doesn't mean much. I do have a directional fabric, so I've got all of my arrows pointing in the same direction. And then these four are for my middle. As you can see on this picture is you've got, this is a square that's applique on to this square. That's this square applique onto the center of this square. And then all of these surround it. And then the four the four um, background footballs go in the middle of this smaller square. So the first thing I'm going to do is baste the big square and then baste the smaller square and then center it and applique this to the square. So now I have my J10, the four and a half inch block, basted. And then what I did is I made, a, I made, took a ruler and made a very light pencil line from, I didn't go all the way across because I didn't have to, so I've made it into this middle. All I need to do is make it far enough in so I can hit the corners of this square. So this square is basted also, opposite sides and then opposite sides. This way is up, and this fabric I've marked on the back but on the front I did it on purpose so that the the yellow arrows point up so what I did is I essentially made an X what the what I got to do now is I got to make sure that each one of these corners touches a piece of that X and what you can see here is this isn't and this isn't but this is so it's a matter of just manipulating it into place and then stapling it. I'm going to staple it on all four sides. But before I do that, I'm going to take a ruler and double check. So if I put my ruler there, it's about an inch and an eighth or sixteenth or whatever the units are. And this one is a little bit farther than that. So I should probably go back over to the other side. Yeah, because this one isn't touching right now. So you can maneuver this around and around to get all four corners touching. Okay, so I got this one touching, this one touching, and this one touching, and that one touching. So let's see if that worked. So I got an inch and an eighth, and an inch and an eighth-ish. Yeah, about an, yeah, that same. And then this way, I'm assuming, would also be an inch and an eighth. And then an inch and an eighth. Maybe. Oh, there's the zero line. So it's almost 100% there. I'm just going to call it good. So I will take my stapler, if I can find it. There we go. And then I staple one side. And then I'm going to staple the opposite side. And then check. Yep, my four corners. I'm going to make sure that this gets tacked down. And then that this gets tacked down. Now I can applique this down and then I can take out my staples and move on to the next step. So now I've got my square applique onto my larger square. I'm going to leave my marks here, and actually I'm going to add more marks. I'm going to find the center of this side, and then I'm going to draw a line from this corner to that, and this corner to that, and so on, so that I have spots and lines for each little football shape that I need to place, and then I need to baste my footballs with my gathering stitch method. Okay, so when I laid out, I've got my footballs laid out, and I've got one basted. And when I laid them all out, I've laid them out with the paper side up, which essentially means I'm looking at the back. 
so that if I want to translate this to this piece, I'm going to make sure this is what I'm looking at. So each piece, when you flip it over, so for example, this one is going to be on this section of the square. So that's important because I have a directional fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste one of these at a time and then place it. So I will baste this one and then I'll place it on my square. So that way I don't lose track of which way is directional because once I baste this, I lose my arrow. So I'm going to do that one at a time and get these connected. The four of these, these are not directional and these go in the middle. And then we'll talk about placement tips. So now it's time to place the little white footballs in the middle. And I was playing with this a little bit, trying to figure out how to line it up. And I came up with, take a white mechanical pencil and draw an additional line across the middle of your square. Because that just makes sense. So that's what I did. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's what this little white line is, my little chalk line. And so all four points are going to meet right here when the line meets, clearly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the point of my little football in the center and then line it up to the edge of the corner because it doesn't quite go all the way to the edge. So I'm going to place that there and then before I staple it down I'm going to verify placement by putting the same one on the opposite side to make sure that it fills the square correctly. So then I'll take this off and staple the one I started with and then I'll be able to attach the other two. So now I've got all four of my little footballs stapled to my block and ready for applique. What I'm going to do when I get ready to do the applique is I have this little point in the middle here where these are kind of just sitting there. I could attach them and pull them together with my thread. I could make sure, what I'm going to basically do is make sure that they're evenly spaced. Whether I have them touching or whether I have a space in the middle, I want to make sure that I do the same thing so it looks intentional. So there's no wrong, but if you make it look intentional, then it, then it automatically looks right. So I'll make sure that when I do these to the corner, I'll kind of pull these this way so that they line up right. Even though they're stapled in two spots, they do shift a little bit if you need them to. So I'm going to applique these down and then I'm going to work on attaching my outs outside sections that are directional. So now I've got all of my four footballs basted in the center and I've taken the basting out of this one. And in case you haven't seen it in the past, I'm just going to do this real quick. And I'm going to cut on my knot that I tied off on. I'm going to cut both sides of the thread on either side. My scissors are a little thick for this kind of small work. Then I'm going to take away that knot and there's a little thread that's left. So I'm going to take that little bit off and I'm going to take my stiletto and pick out my basting. The reason I like my stiletto is because then it doesn't, if, it, if it's, it's not as easily to snag the fabric as a needle. So I'm just going to pull these out carefully without snagging my fabric. When I get to this point, I should be able to pull this off completely. Then this is what's left of the gathering stitch. And that was apparently a leftover stitch. So I'm going to pull this as my original knot. And I'm just going to pull this. And that's going to pull all the gathering stitches out. And I'm left with this big long piece of thread. And then I'm going to do the other two. Now that I've got all of my basting out, I'm going to work on placement of these. I'm going to baste each one and then place it so that I don't lose my directional indication. So I have to remember which way it goes based on my directional. But my problem right now is that I've basted this to this and this is background so there's no direction on it. So if you remember, I've indicated that my direction up is these little yellow arrows is what's pointing up. So I'm going to transfer my directional mark to the back of my square so that I have something to refer to as I move forward. So I'll just put a little arrow there and this is how I lined it up 
So this corner here is actually going to be on this bottom right side. So I'll baste and place one at a time. So I've got two of my footballs of the print placed and I just wanted to make a note of how I'm placing these in the corner. As you notice there's a little space here in between and I just tried to make them even when you're and they're not exact but they're close enough. So when you're looking at this there's this curvature if you get them just right you, this basically forms a curve and it's like a half of a circle so each time that these meet you're going to have a half of a circle on each of these sides so here on here you're going to have and this is not this is staple but it's not applique but this is going to form half of a circle and if you bend it just right you can get there and you know anyway so this is the third one that goes into this point. What I'm doing is I'm leaving a little bit of a space, as you can try to see maybe there. And then I'm also lining up the other edge to this mark that I've made in the middle of my side. So there's my pencil mark and that's where the other point goes. So if I can get this better, there you go. So I'm not cramming this into the corner, I'm just putting it nicely and you have to this back here is the fabric tag that I'm going to tuck underneath so that's and the other thing is is this print I don't have the orange at the point so it may muddy up the look but you get the idea so I'm going to put this point right at not the exact edge but right at the edge so that I have a little bit of space to maneuver and then I'm going to put this point with these three so that it forms a curve with this one. And then I'm going to staple it down with my, of course, big giant stapler. And if it shifts, see once I put the stapler down, this is not a good angle. Once I put the stapler down, it can move, which it did. Let me see if I can do this a little better. Here, let's try that. So if I stick this back in this corner, it's hard to do this with one finger. I usually try to hold this with two, but I'm going to slide this in my stapler and I'm going to hold it down and check it before I staple it and make sure it hasn't shifted. And then I'm just going to staple it. And so I get this look. So this is going to be at the point and I, it's right there that I can use to maneuver that if I have to. And then the rest of them you can see the pencils lines that I've made. This is going to go here and here and so on. And then I'm, I've verified my direction, like my little yellow arrows are going the same direction on each piece. So that's my little checkpoint in case I do forget which way they go. So I will continue placement. So now I've got all of my little footballs attached to my square. I did them one at a time so they were lined up with the direction of the fabric. So now it's just a matter of sewing them down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down the outside rim all the way around. And then I'm going to go in and do the inside rim. This will give you a lot less tie-offs for individual pieces and allow you to um, tie off when you either get to the end of the whole thing or when you need to change threads. So I don't usually use a huge thread because it does wear down on the paper. But with the paper piecing thread that I use, it does hold up a lot better during applique. And this is the paper piecing thread I use. This is just a little thing I wrap around my spool. So we'll get working on that. And then we'll have the, all the applique done. So now I've got all of my little footballs applique down and the basing and staples taken out. And now I have a completed J10 block.